Hi, everybody. Welcome. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, thank you so much for taking the time to tune in to this broadcast. We believe that parenting may be the most rewarding and hardest job that there is. And for us as parents and caretakers to do the best job possible, we deserve a lot of support. And in this series, we're covering ways to support that we can respond to our babies with warmth and how we can build support for ourselves. Yes. And yay, today's topic is playful interaction with your baby. Yay. <laughs> yay. So I'm Laura Minigrode. I'm a certified hand-in-hand parenting instructor in Austin, Texas. Um, I'm a parent of three kids, 12, 15, and 17. Um, and what brought me to Hand in Hand was the tools that Hand in Hand offers that allow us to create a powerful connection with our kids and also to create a support system for ourselves as parents. Um, it's really helping me to become closer to the parent who I really want to be. Uh, I'm Grace Fleming. I'm married and a mom of a 26-year-old. I'm a Hand in Hand parenting instructor, too. I live in the San Francisco Bay Area. And I adore the intelligence, the respect, and the warmth hand-in-hand parenting tools um, embody. And um, I've used the tools with people of all ages, infants, preteens, teens, adults, and even people older than me. (laughs) Thank you so much for being here, Chris. Um, Play is such a cool topic uh, because it's actually how we learn and how we grow as humans. Um, Just can't get enough play in our lives. Um, And our babies actually play. And they have... um, they have a way of actually letting us know when they're open to interaction and wanting to play. So uh, we're going to talk about that first, which is about the timing of play. Um, we want you to be, we want you to give, have a little bit of clues about how to notice when your baby wants to play. Um, an example is, um, I don't know if I can do a good baby impression and do it justice, but um, when your baby wants to play, there's a really, open eye, wide, a wide-eyed look that's expectant, sort of uh, almost like a excited stare that babies do. Um, even really little tiny babies, they're surprisingly good at nonverbal interaction. They give us cues about what they want from how they hold their body. Um, they hold on tight with their fingers. Um, so these are ways that babies tell us that they want uh, – the ways that babies tell us that they want to play are called cues. And um, as you get to know your baby and slow down a little bit and start to notice them, it can be so cool. It's like a, a communication that's happening. Um, and you get to listen to your baby in a way that meets his unique needs. Um, so keep in mind, every baby is different. So there's no formula or recipe, really. Um, it's just tuning in, starting to notice. Um and, it, and this also really helps your baby to learn that he's seen and valued and loved um, and respected. Great. And you're doing this very instinctively as a parent. You want to put up those uh, few words that we uh, prepared for this one little section? Oh, yeah. Here we so go. timing is important. Notice when your baby wants to play. That's, that's a super um, interesting part of learning to learning your baby yeah great thank you so laura what are some cues that um your baby wants to play um there are some cues that babies use um when a baby wants to interact like i said she'll look at you with very bright eyes wide open like a an excited stare um and she may make a shape like Ooh, with her lips or coo, make some sounds. Um, when my daughter was little, um, she's 17 now. Um, but when we were, when she was younger, I just would notice that when we played the game, this little piggy, um, she would just, ooh, make that face um, with when I was doing the game with the toes. Um, and it would just tell me that she was really enjoying it. I could really feel how, um, 
how much delight she was taking in that play. And so I would spend a little bit more time on the part of the game where she was really delighted. Um, so more cues might be things like um, sucking on fingers or clasping hands excitedly. Um, she may stop jerking around too much and just have kind of like a slow movement reaching toward you or even just staying a little bit more still. Um, I think the biggest thing to look for is just the really bright expression on her face, a really open, interaction, interactive look. Um, uh, so I think you used the word open expression. Can you say a little bit more about that? It's uh, yeah, it's so um it's hard to find the right words. It's um I think it's a lot about how excited she looks and uh, very tuned in and kind of like bright eyes. In. Um yeah, she's just s sort of staring at you with with um a lot of connection like drinking you in. Mm -hmm. Um yeah. Yeah. I I so, remember yeah. when <laughs> our son was tiny and, and did that and and they look cute, <laughs> so cute. yeah <laughs> even more cute <laughs> yeah yeah exactly well mm -hmm. cuter than when they're crying <laughs> um, yeah um well i think most of us got it so i think i remember though there were some signs that probably meant i'm done playing for now <laughs> Mm, yeah that's such a good question yeah because the, on the other side of it you want um there's things that your baby does to let you know when she wants to stop playing um and that this you know can happen pretty quickly after you start playing at times babies um you know a, a certain amount of stimulation can be enough um probably a lot less than a kid who's a bit older um so be kind of aware that your playtime may be fairly short and that doesn't mean you're doing it wrong. Um, just it's a good, good thing to be looking out for the, sti the signs to stop. So um, it might be just a few seconds or yeah, maybe. Minute, yeah, a couple oh, minutes. I see. That's, mm. That can fill up your baby's cup. Mm, mm, it can okay. be done. Mm -hmm. yeah. So as you get to know this person, don't, you know, don't ever feel um, that there's a, a big pressure to do everything right um, because it's just a, a, such a process and you're learning so much and your baby's learning you and you're mm -hmm. learning about each other. And it's a very special person who is different than everyone else. So okay. this is, this is such a learning experience for you. Um, so the stop signs, the signs that a baby wants to stop. Um, it might be, uh, I think the biggest thing is um, looking away. Mm. Your baby might, um, just stop returning your eye contact. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a really big sign. Um, yeah, not just, too subtle, is it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, kind of like other humans, I guess. You know, older humans might look away at times, um, and it gives you some information, right? So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think um, I think that's really the easiest to spot of all the stop mm -hmm. stop wanting to stop signs. There could also be arching back, um, covering her face or his face. Mm -hmm. um, things like, um, yeah, babies okay. do sometimes arch their back to get, you know, kind of pull back. I um, remember um, our hus my husband playing and, uh, you know, it's like, um, he's crying. <laughs> I don't yeah, think he's do awesome. that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> He's done. Yeah, that's a really, a really done sign. Um, there's other things like frowning before you get to cry, you know, so oh. start to see facial expressions like mm. wrinkled face, like um, yawning can be a sign um, mm. that babies do that is giving you a little bit of information about being done. Babies, mm. my babies always got the hiccups when they were like, you know, we were playing and it was just getting to be too much. They would get the hiccups. Um, mm. And I knew that it was related to being over, over stimulated or over just done. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, definitely. Oh my gosh. And spitting up is one like two when it gets to that point where it's just too much excitement. Um, I'm really, really done. Yeah. <laughs> well, but the spitting up, our son didn't do that, but um, couldn't that mean that the baby's sick? It definitely could. Yeah. I mean, the, it's an interesting thing. All of this, um, 
is a lot about taking information about when things are happening and relating it to what you're doing at that time. And you start to notice some patterns. Um, yeah. Mm. So it's like uh, when we start to be able to tell the difference between I'm hungry cry versus I'm scared or lonely cry. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Um, yeah. <laughs> They'll, uh, I want to play and stop signs will become clear after you've been playing and noticing them. You'll start to be able to say, oh, I see what's, what he's so, telling me. Yeah. So it's like and, a trial and error. Absolutely. And error. Absolutely. So, yeah, and it's really important to remember that you're learning about this this person by in that exact process, that trial and error process. Mm. It's really the only way to discover what works. Yeah. So you're saying it's okay to make mistakes? Yes. Oh my goodness. Yes. It's the most <laughs> important thing to, to feel confident, you know, trying new things. And that's just always going to be part of the process is maybe some things won't work and some will. And yeah. But you know, some of us are, I, I see just posted this thing. Don't be afraid to make mistakes. Um, I, I know some people who are really nervous about making mm -hmm. mistakes. So. Yeah. Yeah. I, I wasn't worried about that, but I was worried about spoiling him or mm -hmm. um, being his only entertainment. I wanted mm -hmm. him to learn to play with toys or on his own. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. yeah. What do you think about that? Can we spoil um, him? Well, a wise friend who was one of my teachers said to me, you can spoil fruit, but you can't spoil a baby. <laughs> and it's just really, that uh, it sounds like a, a little bit of a cliche, but it's 100% backed up by research that uh, interaction with our baby does not lead to a spoiled baby. Um, babies actually thrive. Your baby really thrives on interacting with you, having your attention, um, your attentive gaze on their play, and um, being able to interact with you is what builds her brain. So no, you cannot spoil a baby. You really can't. I, I my good to know. Uh, many of my elders have you know, warned me about that. So it's it's there. It's part of our culture. Fear it. I, I well, I wish I knew that when my baby was a baby, but <laughs> um, it was an actual worry for me, you know. And yes. people, other people, told me that maybe it wasn't <laughs> such my worry, but older people. Mm -hmm. um, so back to the brain development, are you saying for my baby's brain development, my baby needs me to play with him? Um, yeah, I actually do. Um, I mean, your, what your baby needs is your attention and your um, interaction. Um, and I, I mean, Yes, <laughs> because this helps them to think and solve problems and feel safe enough to to do the things that they need to do to grow. Okay. Well, mm -hmm. um, so just going back to my own experiences. Mm -hmm. So often I was exhausted. You know, there's work, pick up, drop off, mm -hmm. other responsibilities. Um, I felt like um, play was low on my priority list it was hard to play with my baby when I didn't feel like playing I just wanted to rest yeah yeah being a parent is so exhausting it's really there should be a word that's not even exhausted beyond that another one <laughs> that that describes how it feels to be a parent we yeah. all have time that we just can't we can't give anymore um I will say though the good the good thing to know and keep in mind is even just a few minutes of your interacting with your baby can be really valuable. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, some short interrupted time when you're just. Yeah, you mentioned one minute before. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I guess if it's one minute, then even when I was at work, I can imagine myself playing one minute and make it something I can look forward to. Yeah. 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 Hand in hand calls this on an uninterrupted child led playtime special time. Um, and you can do special time with a baby. Um, basically, you you notice what delights your baby and then you follow that um, and just delight in being with her and everything she does. Um, 
and those that that little bit of uninterrupted focus time helps her feel secure and happy that you're her parent and it's really an important little tool that we have for connection ah oh, well i'm glad you said it could be just a couple minutes and that's that's enough you're saying it that's enough yeah so yeah good. so um what can we play with a baby in a minute or two or three, mm-hmm. um, I guess, depending on the child's age? Yeah. Um, well, anything where he's delighted and you're delighted. Um, I like to remember the definition of play is anything that gives you pleasure. So um, an example is peekaboo. That's a game that it's really easy to learn and babies do it really instinctively. You you cover your eyes and the baby will look for you and then you uncover your eyes. You can use a scarf or some way you hide and then you are seen again and say peekaboo um, in a very warm way and and just kind of notice, see what the baby, how the baby responds and if they're delighted. If they're maybe a little scared, then maybe change the game so it's a little bit more... Uh, makes her more happy and excited to continue. Um, mm. Or maybe and, just cover part of your eyes so yeah, that yeah. you're not Such completely a, disappeared. Right. <laughs> yeah. You might try and see what, what it is that makes her really excited, just whatever it is, you know, and follow that and continue with that until she gives you the cue that she's she's done playing. Mm. Um, yes. This, yeah. this is a very exciting. Peekaboo is, is just such a great game um, because of the excitement. <laughs> it's kind of a balance, isn't there? Like, oh, oh, she's gone. And like, oh, she's actually here. <laughs> I remember that. I remember that. It's just um, delight. So you use the word delight quite a few times. So is that the key? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, really, really, that is the key. Mm-hmm. Um delight it's something that makes your baby delighted and excited and then you noticing what makes her delighted is mm-hmm. it's just even more powerful and continuing to provide that it's just a uh, incredibly strong um way for you two to interact for you to notice what's making her delighted and, and providing it in turn um very beautiful interaction well even though i liked playing with my baby um i don't know what it is maybe just fear that i was doing it wrong or something Mm -hmm. i really found it difficult to play uh, in general even though i loved his face and i loved him to death and Mm -hmm. he was so cute Mm -hmm. um and I ended up um, searching high and low to find just the right toys or mm-hmm. playmates to keep him occupied, as it were. And mm-hmm. I, I think I really avoided playing with him if I could get away with it. Do you have mm-hmm. um, any suggestions for any parents out there that might be like me? Mm-hmm. Well, um, I think that's... My suggestion might sound counterintuitive, but I think that would be a great thing to talk to someone, um, finding time to to have someone to talk to about your feelings about it, um, and someone who can listen to you and delight in you and hear you um, in a really supportive way, maybe without telling you some advice, like um, mm. not telling you, oh, just what up, you know, whatever it is, um, but just taking the time to hear what you're your feelings are. Um, Mm. And so I always think that looking to hand in hand parenting for information about listening partnerships is such a great, um, it's a great component of hand in hands approach that Mm -hmm. I just, I can't say enough great things about. So Mm -hmm. that is definitely makes a difference. Mm -hmm. So the logic might be that if I had somebody to listen to me, then I can and tune in with me that I would have learned to listen to my baby and tune in with him. Yeah. I mean, it makes, it makes a difference being, Mm -hmm. being listened to Mm -hmm. is so powerful. And I think that it helps us to um, have more patience and more ability to respond um, because having someone there for us helps us. (sighs) It's true. Well, thank you, Laura. Um, you covered a lot. <laughs> thank you. 
Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So thank you, everybody. I wonder if we have any questions, if there's anyone who would like to um, post any comments. I'd love to see. Let me check on Facebook real quick. Um, hmm. There's a really good article, a couple articles about listening time and special time connecting with babies. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, and we'll post. Um, We'll post some more information before our next talk. So, and anyone, um, we'll kind of check back here if any questions come up. I'd love to answer them later. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Um, our last topic was about crying, and we followed up with a blog, and we'll follow this one up with a blog, oh. too. Isn't that right? Yeah. Okay. And we're skipping next week. And coming back in two weeks, um, please tune in again on June 11th, same time, 12 noon Pacific, 2 p.m. Central, 3 p.m. Eastern, um, when we address a tool for easing separation anxiety. Can't wait. Yeah, it's a really, that is really valuable information. Um, it can be really helpful as you're getting settled into a new um, caregiving environment um, to know a little bit developmentally about what's happening for babies with separation. And um, I really have found those tools extremely valuable. So I'm hoping you can join us. And thank you again, everybody. And thank you to Grace. And oh, thank you, Laura. We'll talk to you soon. Okay. Care, Bye, everybody. everybody. <laughs> Thank you.